Podcast. We got AJ, Eric, and Rudo coming to you live as the Avs blow a three-goal lead to the Vegas Golden Knights and lose four to three. <sighs> When's uh, that uh, heat death of the universe coming? <laughs> Let's get on this, all right? Yeah. Speed things up a little bit. I'm here. ready for it, man. <laughs> what? When's the next meteor gonna hit the Earth? When's that one? I don't know. Yeah. When's our next our, our next mass extinction event? <laughs> Sooner the better. Uh, <laughs> Nice. Dark. Uh, let's uh, let's be real. Dark. Or I will be real. I'll speak for myself. The actual result of this hockey game, I do not care about mm. at all. I do not care that the Avs lost. I do not care that they only got a point. The way the sauce got made didn't feel great. <laughs> Would have much preferred uh, the Avs just losing outright than blowing a three-goal lead in the third period. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't particularly fun. And it doesn't give anyone any confidence in anything. Yeah. That sucks. No, I agree. I mean, yeah, there uh, they were, you know, they were cruising along. I mean, they were fine. They weren't giving up anything. They were playing great. You know what I mean? Like it was just, I mean, maybe Vegas wasn't playing. I don't know, but I thought the Az were playing good and then they were doing their job Did- and on a back to back and, and as soon as, you know, a couple chances happen, and, and, you know, again, chances will happen, um, it's a puck's in their net. You know what I mean? And then the discipline was obviously the ending with two penalties by Josh, cost we'll two goals. And, yeah. yeah. But discipline, you know, wasn't there, so they lost that. They lost a fragile team right now. And But then again, we can't go back to we said before the game. It is what it is. It doesn't really mean anything, you know, but you'd like them to feel good about themselves. And I think, like you just said, I'm the sure they the felt great about made, themselves after two periods. The way the sauce was made, you're right. You know, I think you get on the plane again, you just kind of feel shitty again. Yeah. You know, so how much, how much do we attribute uh, or care about how the third period playing out being them on a Sega Baba? It's not nothing. But. Okay. It's not a lot. Yeah, I didn't give a shit. It's unacceptable. It's back to back days where you have a no show and then you blow a three nothing lead. You do everything right and put yourself in position to win a game uh, and win a game handily. And you completely choke it away. And one of your veterans that you're relying on in the postseason coming up next week takes two brain dead. Penalties. Yeah, just completely yeah. falls apart and. Not just the penalties, but, uh, I mean, I was yelling at the he, TV. He played bad all the way around, for sure. On the game-tying goal, I was like, he needs to get back. He needs to get back. And he's just skating, you know, just cruising along, skating behind, you know, skating backwards with no sense of urgency. And it was just it, just watching Josh Manson implode in the third period was like, great. So you're the face of this. It, is this... What feels like a lifetime ago now, we we were told about Josh Manson. Uh, he can be prone to making the big mistake. Yeah, well, and when he has bad games, this is what they look like. They're horrific games. So do you find solace in that, okay, this was the Josh Manson bad game and we can move on? No. Okay. Because there's nothing in the world that says, oh, well, we at least we got it out of the way now. That means it won't happen next week. Why? What says that? Nothing. Have we learned nothing from the Alexander Georgiev experience this year? There's nothing in the world that says it won't continue, that it won't repeat <laughs> itself. Yeah. Nothing. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me let me rephrase the question then. Do you have faith that Josh Manson can limit the bad going forward? Oh, I, I mean, he's been good. He's been good. He's been really good. He's had stretches of great play this season. Exactly. There's no doubt you know, about that. But, yeah, like tonight, I mean, especially an older guy, you know, you you got waxed yesterday 7 nothing, and 
you're one of the leaders somewhere somehow too. You know, you got to be better than <clears throat> than what he showed there with his lack of judgment on. I, well, so the, let's get into this actually, yeah. right? The first penalty he takes is very dumb. I'm not trying to defend it, <laughs> but it's Josh Manson, right? He's a guy you put on the team to be physical and, and, and be a player that adds that edge to your team. If you're trying to twist yourself into knots, I think you could find a way to excuse the first penalty. I'm not saying you should, but I think you could. The second penalty is just, you can't do that. <laughs> no. Heaven forbid it works and he knocks the puck out of midair. It's still a puck played with the high stick. Yeah, what's the upside there? What is, what play is he making? Right, exactly. No, that's a brain cramp. I mean, that's a brain cramp. He had a brain cramp there. The he entire not, third period is a yeah, brain, yeah, brain, brain cramp, cramp though. Yeah, that's yeah. my problem with it, man. No, I is agree that with AJ. It's just he, he runs over a guy who's not doing anything. It's the easiest interference call. Yeah, I, I'm and not then, saying it wasn't dumb. And, and then he blows, his, he blows his coverage on the, on the game-tying goal, and then... He takes a dumbass penalty in the final minute of of regulation to set them up to lose the game. Like he, as as much as there is justifiable anger and disappointment with the play of Alexander Georgiev, again, you have Josh Manson just lighting his team's chances on fire in the third period. It's ridiculous. And then the not Josh Manson or Alexander Georgiev, they never played any offense. John, uh, Jonathan Druin hits the post, and that's the end of the offense, the entire yep. game. Yep. I, I, you know, I, there's, a, there's not a lot to take from this, right? There, there's not. It's just, you're right. It's just the way the sausage or the sauce was made. And, you know, yep. you're just kind of like, oh, God, yuck. You know what I mean? Like, this is yucky. If, if, if the Avs um, lost this game 4-1... to one, in a way where they just trailed the whole game, we'd be sitting here and going, eh, okay, whatever they lost. They didn't even try. Who cares? But they put two really good periods together, two periods that you're looking at. And if you're assigning any value to this game, you're saying, Hey, that's pretty solid. Good hey, bounce back from last game. It's better. It's better to win than lose. Yeah. And then you, <laughs> you, you take what Boulder. you had built in two periods and throw it in the dumpster in the third period. <laughs> and look, I'm not trying to take anything away from anyone in that third period. They were all bad. There was <laughs> nothing really to write home about. But you just can't have what is supposed to be one of your reliable defensive defensemen in Josh Manson, regardless of, oh, well, he's found whatever offensive ability here in Colorado. He's on this team to play defense first. More than a guy like a Kale McCarr is. More than a guy like a Sam Gerrard is. He's supposed to be a defensive heavy shutdown D, ultimately. And that wasn't even close to it. And then you got to... It's hard to do the job when you're in the penalty box. Yeah. A guy who should be on the Avs PK in the penalty box. I say availability <laughs> is a skill. Counts in games, too. Sitting for four for sure. minutes. I guess it's less than four minutes in the box. In both instances, it doesn't go the full two. It's tough. It's tough there. And... and <laughs> <laughs> You're bringing up Bo Byram. <laughs> no, man. Nobody's missing Bo and Byram. He's not even playing for the Sabres. <laughs> in any case, you need it better there. You needed more offense, as AJ mentioned. The, the Avs felt like they just geared it into reverse, basically, five minutes into the third period. They just said, all right, we're done playing this game. And and maybe a little bit of that is the second pop. I don't know. But that's not an excuse. And then lastly, I, you know, I, I don't care as much about the second and third goals. There are other significant breakdowns there. But the first goal against just can't go in. <laughs> it, you're you're a couple minutes into the third period. If you get through that first five, like Eric always says, you probably just go on to win the third period. I mean, period. it's just not a quality scoring chance. Yeah. It's a it's, it's a extended wraparound. It just can't you can't get beat by that. Well, he doesn't do anything with this stick. He just tucks his entire body into it and he's like, Mom, well, hopefully he hits me with it. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I just I 
I, I think he sucks. Well, well I, I, I think he sucks, and I think that he is completely incapable of mentally pulling himself out of any it's, kind of rut. The second something goes wrong, it's a spiral. Exactly. Yeah. He can't. One, one thing goes wrong, and his game falls apart. He was playing well through two periods. Yeah. Totally. Man, he made, made some really good saves. He made the couple of saves in the couple of times he was he was tested. He wasn't tested a bunch, but he made the saves. Yep. And you're looking at him and you're going great. And then in the third period, he goes full Philip Grubauer. Yep. In Vegas. Yep. And it's just like dude, I I just don't Maybe he has a great postseason. Maybe, right? But what in in God's name would ever lead you to believe uh, or have any kind of confidence that that's on the table right now? He he, you can see it when you watch him in games. You can see it. <laughs> yep. You watch him just emotionally melting down in a game, and it's I. It, I don't know. I, I just yeah. No, go ahead. Regardless of all the other problems that that you can point to on the team and all that, there's no Landy as the captain on the bench, and the defense is giving up chances, and Nathan McKinnon doesn't bother to give a shit the entire second half of the game. All right, fine. But your goaltender has to be your last line of defense, and he's a shooter tutor at this point. That's what it feels like. I, I just I'm I think he sucks and I think he's gonna sink this season. Um here's what I'll say to help you out there. I mean you know what I mean. Like, no, you know what I mean. Like no no but I agree. I mean we, we think the same on that. So if you go back and watch the pregame, I think all three of us said, Listen, it is what it is. We're not too worried about this game. Just go out there and play and don't, you know, don't get injured, right? Which I don't think they, I don't think they lost anyone, right? I mean that we kind that of we know of. not on, that we yeah. know. not on the surface for sure on yeah. the surface, yeah. So I mean, we'll not on the that, right? So that we said, and it was my eater because I said Georgiev is the guy that the game matters to, right? I mean it's a game that he he needs playoffs are right in the, around the corner. He got shit canned yesterday, right? I mean he just did. Uh, he got pulled. Let's see how he does today because that's important for him. Didn't pass the test, and, and, I, and I think that's what AJ is trying to say there. You know what <laughs> I mean? And then, and I agree, he didn't pass the test. Now, does that make me start to worry about all? The, yes. Do I like their roster? Yes, I love their roster. Do I? Am I worried in that? Yes. Um, you brought it up. He doesn't seem to have the capability when one thing goes wrong to stop it and move on to the next shot. It just it just escalates. It escalates. And when you're fragile as a team, like they didn't give up that much tonight. Let's not kid ourselves. But they still found a way to give up four and five. I mean, one it, that didn't count. But I'm just saying, there's still fine ways to give up goals because every time the puck goes, the puck's in their net. This is what I'll say. Even if you don't want to blame Georgiev and it's just not a conversation that sure. I'm going to have again. Yeah. If the objective of this season and the last three weeks was to get your starting goaltender confident going into the playoffs, last stretch of games, four given up, six given up, six given up, two given up. All right, not terrible. Four given up in 20 minutes, four given up. There is one 900 save percentage in that stretch. Hell yeah. And that's Minnesota, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. That's, and, but that's my point. And even if you're saying, oh, well, the team was terrible in front of him, okay, you've still completely shot that guy's confidence. Well, he's the only goaltender that's ever had uh, to play behind a team not playing well in front of him. So, yeah. you know, we should just wave it away because, ah, no, no goaltender has ever had to face a tough situation before with the team in front of him playing like shit. Give me a break. You think Winnipeg's had 80 exceptional games? No. Uh, <laughs> no. No, but their goalie had a crap ton of exceptional games. Well, and know. both of them did because Laurent Brossois was awesome this year. He Absolutely. was the he was the Bross wall. And I I just I like it. What a joke, dude. I'm just 
Well, I mean, it just kind of makes me. Gior- Georgiev starts game one in Winnipeg, and I, I'm not going to be surprised if Anandin starts game two, man. That's where I am with it. I would I would second you on this. I, I, and then he, you cross your fingers if he, because that's what you have. So there's no other option, right? If, if game one is a, he gives up six or he blows a three-goal lead, you can't start him again, right? You just can't. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. It's not like they didn't go back to him. It's not like they didn't give him every opportunity, right? He played both of these games in the back-to-back. He only could play 20 minutes in the first because he couldn't make a save. But He's had a lot of rest, too, the, this past month in my book. You know what I mean? I think he's had rest. Um, Their schedule hasn't even been remotely challenging down the stretch yep. as a team, and they have totally fallen apart. Yep. It's uh, it's. Fuck, it's frustrating. Yeah. Yep. And, like, this is not the 22 team. People keep, like, oh, they lost six of seven. That team clinched first place in the conference with 10 games to go. They ran away with the everything that year. That was a team that was resting players and was practicing. They were literally cardio kings for the last 10 games that season. Yep. I remember covering a game in Winnipeg. While they were there and being like, I have never seen an NHL team this relaxed during morning skate. <laughs> They're just hanging out, joking around, playing pranks on each other. No level of seriousness. That is not this year's team. They had something to play for. They had opportunities to win their division. And they binned all of them. I, mean, <sighs> I know. I can't argue you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't okay, know. I can't. I mean, because I agree. That's why. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. At, at least at the end of the day, they get to go drive home in their Toyota. All right? At least there's that. Toyota offers 17 models with all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, just like the 4Runner, an absolute classic. Uh, Of course, there's a truck or car right for you when it comes to a Toyota, the official vehicle of DNVR. You can get in on a Toyota, whatever you're looking for, whether you're looking for a truck like the Tundra or, you know, you can go get the new 2024 Land Cruiser coming this spring. Uh, Tons of different options, including 16 different hybrid vehicles to choose from, including the iForce Max hybrid truck. They also have SUVs and, of course, uh, sedans and everything you could want. Visit your front range Toyota stores at a location near you. AutoNation Toyota, Arapahoe and Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is the official vehicle of the Colorado Avalanche and the official vehicle of DNVR. If only the Avs had the consistency of a Toyota <laughs> and the reliability of a Toyota. How Must much be better a, off would they be right can, now? Can uh, Forerunner start in goal? Is that legal? Oh, just park it there. <laughs> make them shoot low. <laughs> uh, I, look, maybe, uh, maybe the Avs dreams is a little bit of fantasy. If you are looking to play some fantasy, get with Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. You can go over with Underdog and play their pick'em game. You can pick up to five different players to be higher or lower on any given stat that you're looking for, uh, and you can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Uh, you can even make rivals picks if you're pitting two players against each other. Uh, and you can turn on things like pick'em insurance to give you that little bit of wiggle room. So maybe you get three of your four picks right. You're still good to go. Uh, I've been dabbling in it a little bit. I took Kale McCarr to uh, be a plus player tonight as one of my picks. Unfortunately, I also picked a bunch of baseball pitchers to not give up runs in the first inning, and that didn't happen. So... That's bad a bad by me. That's a bad beat too. I know, right? First inning, man. It almost on. never happens. I'm getting that. I'm saying. Come on. Maybe, uh, maybe your underdog fantasy pick'em is to uh, pick the higher goals on the Avs goaltender every single time. Seems like you can make good money. Over, on over, over, right over, 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 <laughs> over. Lots of lots of higher, <laughs> higher side on that one. Uh, sign up today with Underdog Fantasy with promo code DNVR and get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as an instant pick'em special in your lobby. 
Uh, visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with that promo code DNVR to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred bucks, as well as that instant pick them special must be 18 plus and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply concerned with your play call 1-800-522-4700 or visit mpcgambling.org. Second period of the DNVR avalanche podcast. Um, I, I do want to take away some positives here. I know that's obviously not the vibe of the night. But again, you're looking at a team that really played two really good periods of hockey. Tonight. I, I see people hating on Casey Middlestad, and I'm just going to say, go back and watch the Miko Ranton yeah. and goal he again. He sets dude. up that entire play. And honestly, he had a great game today. He, yeah, he goes he hard awesome. through yeah. the middle of the middle of the ice, uh-huh. skates through their defense, and gets that entire zone entry set up. He doesn't get a point on it, but that play starts with Casey Middlestad, and I thought he was really good for a while today. He was. On yep. the wall, he was outstanding. I yep. mean, I get I get that you need production out of guys. You need but uh, that, that you need points out of guys that get minutes, but uh, just please, for the love of all that is holy, watch the damn game. <laughs> and uh, honestly, it, it's hard to have much problem, I think, with the Avs' top six in the first two periods. I think you can have some issue with Nathan McKinnon on the game tying goal. I, I have a big issue with him. He just he's just floating back he's there. He's literally just puck watching. Yep. He's like drifting towards Howden. He's not paying any attention to the to William Carlson driving up the center of the ice. Yep. I can understand where Josh Manson's like, all right, I have a teammate back here. I don't need I'm gonna hang out in the neutral zone and make sure that a that a late trailer is not gonna up, get yeah. here. And I've got a guy who should be picking him up. As much yeah. as I'm frustrated with Josh Manson completely falling apart in the third period of the game, Nathan McKinnon AFKs. Yeah. It's a it's a controller disconnect. It's horrible, horrible defense by him. He got caught putt watching watching. You can see on the replay, yeah. then he's watching the puck, and then all of a sudden he's like Oh shit! You know what I mean, like right, you know yeah. I mean? like you see it, and then you see him start skating a little bit harder, like, oh, and crap. it's too late. And then yeah. you see Josh, that's like, nay. You know what I mean? Like it's yep. just, you know, again, that's that's the stretch they're in. Yep. That's the stretch they're in, and then and then what else happens after? There's no say. I'm not again. I'm sure. not saying like it's just there. Every time there's a f up like this, the puck's in the net. Yeah, there is no save. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that's a weak goal. It's not a save. Somewhere somehow, you you got to bail your team out. You know what I mean, and then it's just not happening, and that's why you're seeing some losses. So, it's yeah. I mean, there's it's just tough. It, it's tough to sit here and talk about things that the Avs did well when they it, it all means nothing because they played one terrible period. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know. You gotta find a you gotta find a way to pull yourself out of the spiral, right? You gotta take something and say, "Hey, we we did this well. We can work off of that and and do other things well." It's just tough right now for for the Abs themselves and and as Avalanche fans, like I can sit here and believe that I think the Abs will be a better team, more locked in, whatever you want to call it, in the playoffs, but they're not giving a whole lot of reason to be confident in them down the stretch. You're watching a team that's getting bopped on a lot of nights. I, I don't know. I, how do you, how do you think that locker room is right now, Eric? Are, are they a team confident in themselves despite this, or is this, do you think this is getting to them? No, this is where I think that as a whole, um, I'm not worried. For next week as a whole i'm talking about the group the room um they have a good group they have a good room um i do believe that they'll be fine come next week you know what i mean like you're gonna see some special things from mckinnon and mccarr and you know i do believe that um i'm not gonna shy away from uh that i'm confident with the goal i'm not uh, i i think that going in there do I think they're gonna have some balls? Do I think they're gonna be smart? Do I think that they're gonna they're not gonna be dumb like tonight in the third and take unnecessary penalties? No. <laughs> but I'm not confident about the goaltending. And 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 again, I'm gonna talk a little more about it. Like let's something that's very fresh here this weekend is the Denver Pioneers. 
You really think the Denver Pioneers played two flawless games? Yes. <laughs> I watched them. They were perfect. Yeah, okay. How dare you? They did all a right. great job of getting all the calls. No, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I know. That's, I'm, I'm talking about both. Some salt in the wound there. <laughs> yes. Trying to rub it in. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> man. Oh, but I'm saying like, Jesus. I mean, David Carl's an awesome coach. Uh, you know they, they. You know what? They scored two goals their last four games. They scored eight goals the last four games. They went four and zero. They won every game like two one or two nothing. And they were the highest scoring team in the country, right? In goals for and everything. And that's how you win games in playoffs. But yeah, they gave up a shit ton of chances. They did. I mean, yesterday they played a flawless game first half, and then by the end they gave what twenty five shots in the third. Like there was like what fifteen scoring chances, and the goaltender was awesome. Headbutt and pucks and shit. That's that awesome, how you win. man. But I'm just. Saying, but nobody's talking about freaking Sean Barons or whoever making a dumb play yesterday, and then all of a sudden the goalie cleaned it up, and that's what goalies are there for. You can't win without good goaltending. When your goaltending is below average, it is freaking tough, and that's what I'm trying to say to people here. Like, it's, You make mistakes, but goaltending has to be up to well, par, I mean, and just, it hasn't been there. Just look at last year's Avalanche team. So yeah. much worse than this year's team. But your goaltender last year was great. Yeah. The same guy, by the way. Yeah. It, he was, Kyrgyz was awesome last year. He was a huge reason that they won their division. Yep. He was a big reason why we were so, we felt, we felt so good about the Avs coming into this season, yep. despite some obvious roster holes. Then they filled yeah. most and, of the and, roster holes, and it's the goalie that's right. the and problem. Then yeah. Kyrgyz has gone to pieces, and he can't get himself out of it. Yep. I mean, mentally, you've seen him completely fall apart. Yep. I mean, he's he's hitting teammates with sticks. He's hitting uh, equipment guys with with a broken stick. Yeah, I mean the guy the guy is totally melted down in front of us. You can't keep him after this year. I'm not even like super ex- like I don't even want to get into summer stuff. But n- unless he goes out and completely does a 180 in the postseason, there's no way you can try and run this back with that guy. And we'll talk about it this week. We will, we will. because Just of that. But- the postseason, the? everything goes out the window, and it's a brand new season. Now, I'm not shying away from it makes me nervous that he will turn the corner. And you know what I mean? And we'll talk about that all that. But let me let me turn this corner to something else that has stood out to me over the last stretch of games. And this probably doesn't really matter when it comes to playoffs because you're not going to be killing a lot of penalties with only three guys out there. Is it a weird choice to you guys that Cogliano is the forward. Dude, it's a bad choice. And, and, and like, forget three man penalty kills. Cogliano hasn't been any good on the PK just in general this year. Feels like a weird choice to me. It's a bad choice. You went out and got Yakov Trenin specifically because he's a really good PK guy and then has been good. He came as, here and started winning face offs like a mad Right. Man. As yeah. a specifically PK face offs. And you start overtime with Andrew Cogliano. Like, you know that when you lose that face-off, because Andrew Cogliano is very likely not winning that face-off. When <laughs> the you lose, won, they fucking iced the puck. <laughs> when you, when you yeah. lose that face-off, then Andrew Cogliano is very likely stuck on the ice for, uh, for in, until, until the whistle. <laughs> until the game. Which is, <laughs> which is exactly what happened. Yep. They Left and, him out there. Well, and left him out there. Did happen, he wins the face-off. McCarr the fails yeah. to get the puck out of the zone. They get a save. He loses a face off. They lose the game. Yeah. Okay. You got away with it twice. Yeah. The third time, Andrew Cogliano is that trusted, <laughs> that trusted that a guy that you specifically went out to get in that role, your coaching staff just goes, "Eh, we got away with this twice. Yeah. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, it's tough. For Fuck me. off, dude. It's just it's it's, that's that's an area where you look at Jared Bednar and you just go, "What are you doing?" What are you doing? You have a guy that is washed. I get that you love him. I get that he's that he's trusted and that he's a great voice and he's got all the intangibles. But as an NHL player, he's done. He is done. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. Hey, Eric, do you think there's any more value to that guy getting on the ice? Or is it do you have to have a real hard conversation there? Well, right now, in the situation they're in, I think there is a place for him, but I don't think there's a place like AJ Sin in crucial situations, maybe. Certainly not taking sense? important yeah. face-offs. You well, shouldn't in, be doing in, that. In a, f- a four-on-three, you have to make it count. Yeah. Yeah. You have to make a good decision there. 
As part of a four-man unit, you can hide him a little bit. All right, we're going to have him cover this one little part of the ice. He's still a good skater, so he can get places. You saw they had a whiff. Yeah. And Cogliano didn't pick up the puck, didn't even come close to it, never once pressured a puck out high because you can't in a four-on-three. So the speed is completely negated. If he's not even getting out there and getting after a guy out high, why do you why do you have him out there? He's done. I agree. I yeah. agree. It's it's just tough when you're looking for something to bail you out and you don't trust your goaltender. You can't trust your Josh Manson in a game like this. Now you 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 can't trust your PK in, in a three man situation if Cogliano is your go to forward. <laughs> It's ban this guy, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're fine. It's just that type of a game. Uh, it's it's just hard when you're looking at something to trust in a game that has gone sideways on you, and there isn't really anything to trust, right? You trust the top guys to play quality offense for you? Yeah, probably most of the time. But even them, you're looking in this game and Nathan McKinnon is directly responsible for the game tying goal. I don't know. I, I don't know where the abs turn when when this happens. And and obviously the answer is they turn to one of the guys that they don't trust right now. Someone's got to earn the trust. Yeah, time's up. <laughs> the playoffs start in less than a week. <laughs> so no. I don't envy being in that spot. I'll put it that way. I don't know. This is still a good team. This is still, we'll talk about it this week, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's not hard to look at them on paper and yeah. go, this is a really good hockey team. Yeah. Look at him in the, on the ice in the first two periods of this yeah. game. I mean, first two periods on a Sega Baba. Yeah. Like they are, they really took it to Vegas and then they, their brains just, Powered down yeah, for and, one period. And, and as we mentioned, no doubt being on a Sega Baba plays a role in it. But not but that I much don't, of a I role. Don't, yeah. I don't, I just, I'm not here for it today. After what happened yesterday, you yeah. can't you can't do that. If they had won yesterday. Different story. We'd, sure. prob- we'd be really disappointed right now. Like, man, they really just threw a, a, a you, great you chance. just watch their legs go. Exactly. Whatever, but. Exactly. But after what happened yesterday, having a 3 nothing league going into the third, it's unacceptable. There's nothing about the team right now other than Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Miko Ranton, and being superstar caliber yeah. players that makes you feel like, yeah, come come postseason next weekend, they're dangerous. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a little more than that, but certainly on any given night, you just have no idea what you're going to get out of a significant portion of this team. I don't even think I agree with that. I think it's just, okay. I think it comes back to 40. I, I mean, I, I think that's, that's the, the guy, root cause for that's sure. That's the guy you don't know but, what you're going to get. And that there are some resonates games, up the lineup. But. There are some times where they don't play well defensively. There are some times where, you know, they have a discipline problem. Yeah, that is every hockey team in existence. You're not wrong. But you have a starting goaltender that cannot get it together. It looked like he was turning a corner, and then the last seven his last seven starts he's have cratered. happened. Yeah. And, yeah, he's cratered. What else can you say? I don't think he finishes the postseason series. I think that's a that's a it's fair a take possibility. Yeah. Yep. Uh you know, some of us like to eat our way out of our grief. Uh, I mean, look at the three of us. We definitely <laughs> no do. No kidding, right? Hey, if, hey, if hey, hey! Look, at least we're not CHGO. All right. Shout out my man Jay. He does yeah. does the I'm fat podcast on the side. So yeah. we're in good company here at All City. <laughs> <laughs> we're podcasters. What do you expect? Yeah, come on. Uh, look, here in Denver, if you're looking to eat your way through some stuff, Raisin Cane's the place to go. All right. To be honest with you. Delicious chicken. Their chicken fingers are amazing, but like catch me out back just straight guzzling their sauce by itself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is disgusting. Bruno is a sauce guggler, like confirmed. Yeah. Sauce. Come out behind the DNVR bar. And you'll, yeah, you'll just see him with packets. He's putting them into a water bottle and just... <laughs> disgusting. Oh, 
their their sauce is amazing though. Like I'm not kidding about their raisin cane sauce. It's absolutely delicious. Uh, go get yourself some raisin canes chicken finger meals. They get they're served up fast. Absolutely delicious. They also got that crinkle cut fries and buttery Texas toast to go with their meals. So find your local Raising Cane's location and you can order on mobile or online right now. For cook to order hand batter chicken fingers, race into Raising Cane's, turbocharge your chicken fingers and get them even faster by ordering online at RaisingCane's.com or through their mobile app, Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers One Love. Once you've got a Raising Cane's in one hand, get yourself a chillin' beer Coors Light in the other hand. I don't know. Avs fans might be more drinking to forget as of late, but you know, it's also good to take a breath, relax a little bit. Are you talking to Georgiev now? I might be. Maybe he needs a Coors can, Light. Can man. we get him a Coors yeah. Light mid game? <laughs> Who knows what's in that water bottle? All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'll, I'll tell you after. I'll wait. <laughs> okay. All right, ominous. <laughs> I'll let you finish to read. Either way, Coors Light, <laughs> the beer made to chill. Uh, whether it's remembering that we all live and die with our emotions over a children's game and maybe we should chill out or whether it's because the abs are actually good and we should chill out either way. Coors Light, you don't even have to get up off your couch. Go to CoorsLight.com slash DNVR with Instacart. You can order the Coors Light to get delivered right to your front door. But right here in Golden, Colorado, get yourself a Coors Light, the beer made to chill. Uh, of course, please party responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Well, I got to know. What I wasn't going to yeah. say. You know, I just saw. That's what I was looking at. I mean, Ben and I on this press conference after the game a couple minutes ago said, quote, unquote, he's got to come up with a big save for the guys. He did. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't say what, it any more straightforward than I'm that. Not, I don't know what to tell you. You just have to look at the game. And I, that's why I said the other day. He's just. There's times in a game where you have to come up with there will be mistakes. There will be brain cramps, just like DU did yesterday. They had brain cramps. As it turns saves. out, there is another team on the ice trying to score goals That's as well. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. It's the NHL. Like, guys, it's not you're not going to wax teams and not let them have. And you're going to make mistakes. That's what happens. But when you're fragile and you're not getting the save, it's a tough combo. It's a tough combo. You can nitpick all the girls you want. Like, I, I don't like the first. I really don't like the first. I don't like the second one. Hey, I don't like the third one. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, I don't like them. So, it fourth was one was fine. <laughs> so, it, it, it's starting to sound like you just don't like goals against at that point, to be honest. No, I, I know, but I just. <laughs> like, the 200 like, goals he's allowed this year. Not a fan. <laughs> I just don't like when they go in bunches. Like, it's like, I hate it. As a team, yeah. as an individual, as a player, as a goalie, wait, not wait. just a goalie. It's just... I said it... God, like put a band-aid Five on minutes it, into like. the third period, they scored the first one. I said, hey, well, you know what? This is a chance for Georgiev to prove he cannot give up the next one. Yeah. Guess what? Jesus. That was pretty gnarly. Yeah. Not going to lie. <laughs> I felt that one. Wow. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> uh, no. Bang the table. Uh, Sorry, they shouldn't have been that table. Uh, look, nothing you learned from this game is anything new, right? No. It, you didn't yeah. say, oh, wow, look yeah. at this new problem that the Colorado Avalanche might have. Yeah. It's not like we're discovering new issues with the team. So however you feel about the abs, I don't think this game changed it all that much. I know it didn't for me, even if it is disappointing. It is. But. End of the day, there's one more game left until the uh, important stuff starts. And yeah. let's face it, the outcome of this season will be judged on the playoffs. If That's the abs always been the case, if yeah. the abs roll up and win their first round series. Nobody's going to remember the last two weeks of the season other than, ha-ha, remember how bad they were and then they got good? Uh -huh. New season coming up. The Avs roll All up into the, the first window. round and get bodied by Winnipeg. Everyone's going to say, well, yeah, they sucked. They've sucked for months. 
They have to. They, they, it's, it, yeah. The onus is on the team to go out and do it in the playoffs. That's all. Five point team sucked for months. <laughs> well, I mean, dramatic. That's how people are, though. I understand. I understand I the. Yeah. Ru- somebody's talking about a breakaway save. It's not a routine. Yeah, save. Nobody's, give me a, give me a nobody's break, saying, dude. Nobody's saying it's a routine save. I We're am. Saying, no, no, no. It's not even a breakaway. You're sa- you you have to make saves. You have to make saves. Like he made a pad across, save. You don't pass across. You made the pass. And then everyone, I'm reading all over Twitter. Oh, my God. With goalies do that five, six, seven, eight times a game. Like you have to make saves. That's your job. <laughs> it's your so, only job. You're supposed to stop You're not breakaways. asked to play defense. You're not asked to We're score goals. We're not saying that's a weak goal when you give up a breakaway goal. We're not. Nobody's saying it's a weak goal. We're saying you got to make saves. And there's a big difference, you know. That's their job. Cover up the shit. I'm just, I'm just done making any, any kind of excuse for him. Do your job, dude. He's doing his job worse than any other Av other than Jack Johnson is doing his job on the team. I think that's just where I am with it. And one of those guys is a third pairing defenseman that plays 14 minutes a night, and you can, you can get away with it. It's fine. It's not a big deal. But your, your goaltender, your goaltender being that bad? No, you won't survive. Your congratulations, you accidentally rebuilt the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> That's a fact. Whoops. I uh, I don't know. I don't have a ton else to say. Let's get to the Super Chats. $2 from A-Wolf who says, The Avs team feels very fake to me. I don't know that I agree with that at all, to be I honest. I definitely don't. Nathan McKinnon, 138 points ain't fake. <laughs> <laughs> Miko Rantanen's 100 point season ain't fake. Jonathan Druin's resurgence it's, isn't fake. Is Kale McCarr up to 90 now? Did he have 80, yeah. 89, 90? Yeah. Mm, he was somewhere in there. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. His 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 next point per game season. Yeah. And <laughs> potential fake. potential Norris Trophy finalist again. Yep. He won't win it, but he might be a finalist Very again. Very well could be a finalist. I'm pretty comfortable believing he's going to be top five in the voting. Oh, for sure. So. You know, and then he'll finish sixth because well, yeah. that's what happens when I have confidence in something. Yeah. I, anyway, I don't think they're fake. They have the best advantage that you could have, but they have uh, arguably the worst Achilles heel that you could have. And right now, that's an interesting push and pull. And that's not even fake. It's pretty reflected in the stats. Yep. Uh, five dollars from Wyo, who says one five three ten. That's how they finished twenty uh, three and ten. Uh, that's how they finish 21-22. Don't panic yet. Wait until after game one. It's just not that team. That team was better than yeah, this year's team. I, I I agree that I don't think they're comparable. I I wouldn't say you should be panicking. Mostly because I believe in this team's core's ability to play in the playoffs. But you definitely should have some concerns. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you're if you're rolling in right now and you're like, yeah, I'm not concerned at all. Um, that's as I want what you're having. That's as unrealistic as the teams as the people saying, yeah, if the Avs don't fire Bednar, they're going to get swept in the playoffs. <laughs> or wanting to fire Bednar because he didn't change Cogliano in overtime. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's a great idea. Fire your coach and change all of your systems. One game before the start of the postseason because of that decision. For a situation, by the way, that just doesn't exist in the playoffs. <laughs> those are those are both unrealistic <laughs> right. uh, sides of that. Uh, right. sides of the You've same gone coin. too far in either right. direction. <laughs> like, you, your pendulums are too extreme here, friends. Uh, 99 cents from Easton who says, a pile of poop with a face. For our... For our audio people, that's a super sticker. It is a super sticker. He's not just reading that for fun. (laughs) In a fun voice. $10 from Eric who says, don't have anything. I just want to send some love. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. We we do appreciate that part. Sometimes you need some love. You you always need love. True. That's why I married my wife. Uh, $5 from Clay. Gross. That's fine. Subtle flex. <laughs> I'm gross all the time. Uh, yep, that Georgie played himself out of a job this year over and over. Wish they hadn't been so committed to him all year. Hopefully he can outscore. I, I want to talk about this really quick because it's not like 
they committed to him all year as if there were other realistic options. It, it, if you want to go all the way back to the off season and say the Avs didn't go out and get a better starter, I think even then you're stretching a little bit, but okay, sure. You got into this season and the decision was already made. It wasn't like, oh yeah, you could go get Connor Hellebuck mid season. That's not a realistic thing. That doesn't happen. No. You can't just do that. They were they were gonna be with Georgiev as their starter from November. Yeah, the best goaltender that got traded this season was Jake Allen. I think so. I'm, how do you feel about Kakinen? I mean, whatever. Not. I mean, sure. I, I like him. I don't think he's a starter. Sure. My point being, it's not like they could have just gone and gotten a better NHL starter. Yeah. I mean, is Cal Ritchie untouchable or not? Because you're going to need Cal Ritchie. You're going to need a first-round pick. You're going to need something else if you're going to try and go get UC Soros. Yep. You know, and then even then you have him for one year, and then you have to pay him double what he's making now. And lest we forget, six games into the season, Georgiev had played amazing. Yeah, I mean, you can throw out names that you like, like Charlie Lindgren, but why would the Caps trade their starting goaltender yep. when they think they're going to make the playoffs? <laughs> Alex Lyon, um, pass. You watched him nuclear meltdown in the playoffs last season. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to go get that guy. <laughs> yeah. Literally lost the starting job because of his playoffs. Yeah. Well. Anyway, it's a hard position to get right. Yeah, I, I, I'm, which I'm is not... why they looked like geniuses last year when right. they paid so little and Georgiev was so good, which feels like it was ten years ago. Yeah. And then he's just been so frustratingly inconsistent and poor this year yeah. that you're like, you can't take this chance I'm, next year. I'm not saying they got Georgiev right; they got it wrong. But I'm also saying it's not like goalies are just growing on trees out here and the Avs could have gone and gotten a starter. Yeah. <laughs> you look at what happened. Uh, the, the LA Kings and the New Jersey Devils nuked their own seasons because getting it right at the goaltending position when you are when you have limitations right. is hard. It's hard. There's not that many of them out there. Are there how many good starting goaltenders exist in the NHL? Would you say uh, 10? I was going to say 15. Sure. And like Charlie Lindgren is like like a like a like is well Charlie yeah. Lindgren's like your year last year. Yeah. We were looking at him and you're like, wow, everybody else really missed the boat on this guy. Yeah. A year from now, is he is he still gonna be good? I don't know. Yep. It's don't being know. being a long term starter, being a true blue number one starter in the NHL is really, really, really hard. You could be really good for 30 games, but when you get into that seat and it's your job. It strips away all the pretenders. Uh, I don't know. All who, of them. I don't know who it was in the Toyota chat. Uh, Syndistic man. I don't know. The guy who said having Flurry as a backup would be nice. Eric, this was your take at the deadline. I agreed. If they Flurry would have wanted, they tried. He didn't want to move. Yeah. So, if yeah. Flurry would have been about it, I would have been about it. It would have been. A, it would have been, been a, perfect to just calm the waters. Would have checked he all the boxes. He didn't want to come. Right. He it, didn't want to go. It he isn't about. Anywhere. Oh, this is the new starter. It was. A mental check for Georgiev, right? He's a mentor. Like, let's go help you help you out a little bit. You know, like make breathe. You know, like mm -hmm. it didn't happen. It did not. Grubauer, another guy. That guy got here, had a couple of decent years behind some really good teams, and then went to Seattle behind some good defensive teams. Yep. and melted down. He, he hadn't been any good either. Yeah. He's been terrible, to be honest. Uh, it's a hard job. It's a hard job, and it's a hard thing to get right because you don't know from year to year. A guy, can, a, a skater can have a good year or a bad year, and you're like, oh, man, we've got him on a four-year deal, and we think that he's going to be a lot better next year. And you can work with that. But when a goaltender has a bad year, there's no hiding. Yep. There's nothing you can do about it. Where I think the Avs really, truly went wrong this year is that they never – they got to Annan in too late. I agree with that. Yeah. The whole pros of a top. Now you're going into playoffs where you don't know what he is. Right? The whole pros of a top thing was a waste of everyone's time. Agreed. In my opinion. Agreed. You had you had a guy that you've been developing for years. If he had had 10 extra starts this year, not that you would feel incredible about playing him you'd in the postseason. you have a better feel for but what you'd have, he is. You yeah. would double his body of work. Yep. 
can I can I ask real quick? Yeah, of course. Who was the backup backup while Eustace was injured though? Because he was injured for like a solid little chunk of the season that like he wouldn't that have was been available after Prozvatov had already been signed. Though. Yeah, so okay. that was that was okay. after the Prozvatov claim. Okay. Like Eustace was healthy on October twelfth or whenever the season. Yeah, started. Yeah, they had okay. the chance to keep him and they chose not to because uh, somebody in the organization really liked Ivan Prozvatov and then he uh, got here and then they didn't work. and then they yeah. didn't play him. Yeah. A um, couple more Super Chats to get to that I will get to here in a second. Before I do, we are brought to you by Game Time. Uh, look, if you think the Avs aren't going to be in the playoffs for very long, you might want to get those tickets for the round one games here in Denver. Uh, sign up with Game Time to get your tickets. Use True code that. DNVR to get $20 off your first purchase with them. Of course, if you're not a believer, go get Nuggets playoff tickets again. Then maybe they yeah. can go back to back. Who knows? Whatever the sporting events, even beyond sporting events, concerts, theater, things like that. You can get them through game time and they guarantee the lowest prices. If you find tickets cheaper somewhere else, game time will reimburse your account 110% of the ticket price. So go get with them. Download the app today. There's a link down in the description to download. Join over 15 million people using game time to get their tickets and make sure you're being responsible with your money. Join Premier Members Credit Union today. When you join them, they'll give you 200 bucks just for opening an account and signing up for e-statements. It's that easy. It'll be the best money move you've made yet. They also have tons of other ways to save you money because they're a credit union, not a bank. Yeah, it's getting warm in here. Uh, go join them. Uh, they have a ton of options, like I said, including the new high yield savings account, or you can earn 5% APY on your first $2,000 with their reverse tier money market. Head on over to becomepremier.com today to find out more, open up that new account and sign up for e-statements to get yourself $200. Uh, righty. I think we had two more super chats, three more super chats, $5 from Jacob who said, love you guys. Much appreciated, sir. Uh, $5 from Kyle, who says, Georgiev is done, hand Anand the keys for development. Uh, if it doesn't go well, go get Saros, but Anandin needs to start against Edmonton, I feel. I I don't think they're, whatever you feel, I'm pretty sure they're going to go with Georgiev game one. Anything like that, all bets, anything beyond that, all bets are off. I, but I'm pretty sure they're going Georgiev game one. I just can't see them not. Yep. Going with somebody within it in, in game one. I, yeah. And then after that, all bets are off. Yes, I agree. Uh, <laughs> I agree. Just throw well, open the doors because is this isn't – that's winning time. Like that's – you played all year to get to that point. Yep. The, if the guy, after the way that he has finished the season, if he'd had a great stretch in these seven games – and he had a bad yeah, game one. Then you, trust you wouldn't. Him. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be having the conversation. But because he's That's already right. been inconsistent, and because what have you done for me lately has been awful, awful. Yeah, you you can't. He just can't have a long leash. Can't. I nothing else to say on the matter. I suppose can't can't can't. Uh, and then five dollars from Aaron, who says, "I don't want to jump the gun before the playoffs, but what would be your ideal scenario between the pipes if Georgi can't hack it in the coming rounds?" Just say. I mean, the perfect scenario is Aaron is a true starter, right? Because then you have a super cheap goaltender in the starter position for the next two years. Is that realistic? Probably not. Is that really your ideal going into next year? If I knew one hundred percent that Aaron could do that, yeah, but I don't know that, so. It, I I don't know. The, a guy that can get to a 900 save percentage. How about that? <laughs> yeah. I'll I mean, see what just, happens next week. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, ideal. Like, I've always been a big UC Soros guy. I love him. Put him behind this team. I think he could be really good. But the cost would be prohibitive. The contract would be prohibitive. And I doubt after this year that Nashville's super interested in... Giving him away. <laughs> openly taking a step back, you know, and... Would you really be like, oh, Anandin and Askarov, let's do that next year? Huh? Well, could be fun, but could be a complete train wreck. So um, I think that the uh, it's it's very, very difficult to try to forecast what they're going to do in the summer without yeah. knowing yeah. who all might be available. And I'm, I'm not sitting here looking at it right now, so I don't know. Things always change leading up to it, too. Too late, Super Chats, and then we really got to get out of here. Uh, Garrison says, do you think Gerard are not being there to help cover Manson's left, left him exposed when pinching? 
Not really. The, on the game time goal, the pinch isn't bad. He yep. gets the puck deep and he retreats into the and, neutral zone. And just sits he in has the help zone. though. Yeah. He has help. If it, it, Nathan McKinnon is primarily responsible for that goal against. Yep. Because he looks and he sees that he has. You can see him. He turns his head. He picks McKinnon up. McKinnon also turns and sees Carlson and just doesn't do anything yep. until way too late. And, so yeah. Manson doesn't really misplay that. The the pinch isn't a bad it's, pinch. I, I I would say this too because a lot of people like to single out specific plays. It's the entire body of work for Manson that's the problem. If Absolutely. you make one defensive mistake, shit happens. If that's if, the only mistake, yeah. you're definitely looking at Nathan McKinnon. You're like, Josh Manson's in the crosshairs. But he also took two terrible penalties. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it, it's and the whole thing. The lazy back check at the end of the second period where Georgiev did bail him out with yep. a great save. Yep. That was on Manson. Yep. And then $20 from Richard who says, watching the abs as of late has been frustrating. I appreciate you guys, though. We appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, we appreciate all y'all in chat. Even if y'all do get wild and out and crazy sometimes. Uh, Too true. We wouldn't have jobs without y'all. So thank you very much for watching. We do have to get out of here or I am going to melt in this room. Uh, we appreciate y'all again. And we will be off tomorrow. Tomorrow's our off day. We'll be back Tuesday. And the NHL playoff previews should start hitting Wednesday night. So keep an eye out for those. We'll dive into all the nitty-gritty of the Avs Jets series in those. We'll talk to you soon. We all silly like the mayor. 